We're going to continue working in 3.4 today with expanding algebraic expressions. This time we're going to be distributing with a negative number. So I'm on page 156 in the book and we're going to use the distributive property and apply all of our integer rules. Uh, number one is done in the book, but I'm going to go through that one as well. I'm going to do several examples with you. I would like you to copy them down, so please copy down number one, two, three, and four. Um, number one today, uh, you're going to have to distribute that negative three times x and negative three times that two. So negative three times x, negative three x, and negative three times two will give me negative 6. One negative in my product gives me an answer that has a negative in it. Um, those do not simplify. They don't go together. So my answer is negative 3x, negative 6. Number 2, distributing negative 5 times y, you're going to get negative 5y's. And negative 5 times negative 2, that's negative 2. You always look left of the, so of the number and you'll get that sign there. So Negative 5 times negative 2 gives me positive 10. So that's where applying my integer rules is going to come in handy here. Number 3. Now this says make negative everything inside that parentheses. It's one way you could read it. Or you could say that's negative 1 times the quantity 3x plus 9. And you have to distribute negative 1 to the things that are in the parentheses. So negative 1 times 3x, negative 3x, I'm making them their opposites. Negative 1 times positive 9 is negative 9. So you could read that as make negative everything in the parentheses, or you could think of it as distributing negative 1 to everything in the parentheses, or make opposite what's in the parentheses. A couple ways you could read that one mathematically. The answer is negative 3x, negative 9. Number 4 is another example of that make negative what's in the parentheses, or call it negative 1 and distribute negative 1 to everything in the parentheses, or um, take the opposite of everything that's in the parentheses. A couple ways you could do that. I see it as negative 1 times negative 9, which gives me a positive 9. And negative 1 times negative 2x would give me positive 2x. Now, in algebra, we always like to have our algebraic term first. So best form of this binomial answer would be to put the 2x first, 2x plus 9. Number 5, now I'm distributing a negative 3 to a fraction. So I'm going to have to multiply this out. It's negative 3 times, which I'm going to put it over 1, times negative 2a's over 3, and negative 3, negative 3 times 1 fifth. So I have negative 3 times negative 2a's, which is 6a's. Oh, I could cross cancel those threes. Why didn't I do that? So I'm going to cross cancel those threes. But it is negative 1 times negative 2a, which gives me a 2a. And negative 3 times 1 fifth will give me negative 3 fifths. So 2a minus 3 fifths is my final answer there. I love there. Um, number 6. Negative one-third times p, so negative one-third times that p. It's really p over 1, or I could just call it negative one-third times p, which is negative one-third p's. And a negative one-third times two q's, so negative one-third times two q's, which gives me negative one times two q's is negative two q's. 3 times 1 is 3. Or you could say, um, you could say negative 2 q's over 3, or you could say negative 1 third p and negative 2 thirds q. You can put that q after, oh, that's not going to show up, is it? I'm not going to be able to see that, so I've got to 
move this over. So negative one third P's and negative two thirds Q. So you can leave the Q in the numerator or you can put it after the fraction negative two thirds. Either way, it's the same answer. Um, some of these practice ones are uh, also in the book, so you can find some of these and follow along, but we'll practice some more of these. And I do want you copying each of these examples. This is not as easy as it looks, um, especially as we get into the next step where we're going to have more terms to multiply by. So number one, negative 4 times 3 d's. Negative 4 times positive 3 gives me negative 12 d's. And negative 4, yes, that's negative 2. Negative 4 times negative 2. Now, students sometimes say that's negative 4 times 2 and then subtract it. Okay, so negative 4 times positive 2 would be negative 8 and subtract it. So they leave that subtraction sign there. But you're going to have to change that to add the opposite, and it's positive 8 anyway. So I don't look at it as a subtract sign. I look at it as this is negative 2. So negative 4 times negative 2 is going to give me positive 8. It's easier to do it that way. Number 2, negative 7 times 5 case, negative 35 case. And negative 7 times e's would give me negative 7 e's. Number 3, negative 4 times 6 tenths. I'm going to get 2 and 4 tenths, negative 4 times 6 tenths x. I'm going to get negative, 1 negative in my product, 2 and 4 tenths x. Negative 4 times negative 4 is going to give me positive 16. Now remember, I could have seen that as a minus sign, and negative 4 times positive 4 would give me negative 16, and I'm going to have to change that to add the opposite, so it's going to give me plus 16 anyway. Again, I see this as negative 4, not minus 4. It's easier to do it as negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Easier to do it that way. Negative 1 fourth times 3 y. So negative 1 fourth times ooh, negative 3 y's. And negative one fourth. And yes, I always do draw the two arrows, so I remember that I have to do both terms. Negative one fourth times positive one half. So negative one fourth times negative three y's, two negatives. I'm going to get three y in my numerator, four times one, four in my denominator, and it is positive. I could also call that three fourths y, 3y over 4, or 3 fourths y, either one is correct, and negative 1 fourth times 1 half is negative 1 eighth. So 3y over 4 minus 1 eighth, or 3 fourths y minus 1 eighth. Either one of those is correct form. So notice that the directions now say expand and simplify, because we're going to have like an extra term here in number one. Um, I'm going to just do number one and two because three and four, and I would suggest that you carefully read pages 157, the examples, and 158. Carefully read this expand and simplify section. Um, all four of these examples on this page are done in the book, but I'm going to talk through number one and two Number three and four are done on page 158. You can follow those in the book. Um, number one here says, four times the quantity 2x plus 1, then add on three more x's. So order of operations, I'm going to distribute, multiply first. So I'm going to only take care of that part first. Four times 2x, that's 8x. Four times 1 is 4. 4 does not multiply. That's not in the parentheses, so don't bring this way over here, which is what I see students do sometimes. It's not multiplying that. That parentheses ends there. It's not. It's only multiplying what's in the parentheses. So this 3x just comes down 
And now I can combine, that's the simplified part here, my like terms. I have an 8x and a 3x, so I get 11x plus 4. So I not only distributed, now I'm going back to 3.3 and putting like terms in here, and you've got to put like terms together. So that's the new piece on these next couple examples. Um, what students want to do here is they want to do 7 minus 2 and subtract first and call it 5. Nope, can't do that. You have to multiply first. Negative 2 times x would be, and yes, that's negative 2. Negative 2 times x would be negative 2x. And negative 2 times positive 2 would give me negative 4. I'm going to bring down that 7. That 7 has a positive sign in front of it. It's a positive 7. It's like the constant negative 4 over here. They are both constants. So my algebraic term, negative 2x, does not combine with anything, but my numerical constants do combine to give me positive 3. So my final answer is negative 2x plus 3. That's a tricky one. Um, you can look at number 3 and 4 in your textbook. I'm going to go on to the next page. Expand and simplify. This is the important part here. So I have 4 times the quantity p plus 5 cubes. So 4 times p is 4 p's. 4 times 5 q's would give me 20 q's. And Michelle, since you're in here, um, what could I combine here? Um, you could combine the q's. I can combine the q's. Yes, you're right, Michelle. I can combine the q's. So 20 q and negative 3 q gives me uh, uh, positive 17 cubes. Positive 17 cubes? Yeah. Those are the like terms things. Yeah. So, Michelle, you're already seeing how to do this, this expanding and simplifying. What would you do in number two? Um, you would use the distributive property first. Yeah. You do 2 times 2a and you get 4a. And then you do 2 times 3b and you get 6 and then I have my plus 5b. So I'm doing the distributive property first. Michelle was right. So you got to multiply first. And now I can add like terms. What's 6b's and 5b's, Michelle? 11b's. 11b's. So you get 4a plus 11b's. Very good. Um, number 3 has a double distribute problem in it. Two distributive properties. So 5 times 2m is 10m's. And 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. Negative 1 times 2 m's. Ooh, this is a lot of work in this one. Negative 1 times 2 m's, negative 2 m's. And negative 1 times negative 1 is going to give me positive 1. So now I've got two sets of like terms to add together here. 10 m's take away 2 m's, 8 m's. Negative 15 and positive 1, different signs, subtract. So I'm going to get negative 14. 8m minus 14. Double distributive problem here in number 3. And the last uh, rather difficult one here, last one, number 4. So hopefully you're copying all of these. Number 4 is negative 3 times 1 half k. So negative 3 times 1 half k's, and negative 3 times negative 4, and then I have negative 2 k's over here. So I'm going to keep working on this a little bit. Negative 3 times 1 half k gives me negative 3 halves k. Negative 3 times negative 4 gives me positive 12. And negative 2k's. So I've got like terms here. I've got negative 3 halves and k's and negative 2k's, which I can combine those. Negative 3 halves k and my negative 2k's. Um, I could change this negative 2k's to negative 4 over 2. Negative 4 over 2 does give me negative 2. Okay. So when I combine those, 
keep add the opposite same signs add and keep I get negative 7 halves k and it is okay to leave that improper plus 12. Tough problem there. So you can see that it's getting a little more challenging as we're going further into 3.4.